All right, guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today. For this one, we are doing another bar visit video. So this time I am on Stefansgade in Copenhagen. And uh, I don't know if this is quite Vestibro yet or if it's still Neurobro, not 100% sure. But we're on Stefansgade anyway. And we're doing my first visit to Mikeler and Friends, which is the original collaboration bar between Mikeler and Toto. When I'm filming this little bit for you, I've already been inside and done my first tasting. It was raining when I arrived. So this video is in a kind of roundabout way, but we still should have fun with this. We'll do what we always do, have a little look round do some tastings and stuff like this and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Cool to finally get around to uh, visiting this bar actually so let's go for it. So yeah guys as you can see this is another one of these Copenhagen basement things which is actually quite common for the for these craft beer places but yeah just look around right on the edge of uh, Neurobro Vestibro. As I say, I'm not 100% sure with the districts in Copenhagen, but I know where we are on the map. But uh, yeah, I love these these old apartment blocks and things. Copenhagen, beautiful city. Do recommend that you come and visit here. One of the best beer cities in the world. But let's go and have a little walk around the bar. And I just need to watch. I don't bang my head. But yeah, as you come in, lovely little bar. As you can see, some t-shirts and stuff. Meet the little friends. But you go in, you can basically walk in a circle around this place. We'll have a closer look at the tap list in a minute. But yeah, lovely little bar this, which is great. Um, but yeah, there's something like 40 taps in here, which is just insane. But uh, yeah, you can basically walk all the way through this place, which is sort of, which is really cool. So um, yeah, there you can see there's the second part of the bar. And there's the fridge that has all the stuff in it. So uh, yeah, lots of different Mikuler beers in here. Some we've had before, some we haven't. A few guest beers, a bit of Gamma, a bit of Dea, some War Pigs of course, some old school Amar, some Toul, a Japanese rice lager, that's one of my favourite Mikuler beers I've ever had. But um, yeah, some nerd stuff as well and some of the big Imperial Stouts actually. And yeah, some Balhaun things as well which are pretty cool. But uh, yeah, let's do another tasting. Here's Arano Arano Sand. Hello. Hello. All right, guys. Well, first beer tasting then here at Mikeler and Friends on Stefanskada in Copenhagen. So first one we're going for is number eleven on the tab list, and this one is a uh, uh, Hellas. It's called the Market Hellas, coming in at five point two percent ABV. This one apparently is an oat lager, and the reason I got this was because it reminded me of the. Um, uh, the new Barnes Oat Lager that I had a few months back actually and that was very very nice but this one apparently is brewed by Mikeler London Brew Pub so this should be quite interesting so as you can see lovely kind of bright pale golden colour this one when it poured it had about a half finger of a frothy I would say kind of creamy coloured head but it was really really it looked really really nice but yeah one or two bubbles of carbonation visible there but as you can see pretty much crystal clear and that's kind of how a lot of these lagers go these days to be honest Honest. But yeah, let's look at the aroma and see what we get. I have to say, it smells really, really nice, this one. You still get that kind of crispness of the lager, but you get the smoothness of the oats in there, and I think it just works really nicely. I'd love to have a look at one of the recipes for these oat laggers and just see, you know, how much oat there actually is in the malt base of these things. But yeah, I mean, straight away out of this beer, you can smell a lovely kind of soft white bread in there. You can smell a little bit of crispness, which is obviously going to be lager malt or pilsner malt. You do certainly get a wee bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit quality out of this one which I really do like but um, yeah you can certainly smell the smoothness of the oaty character in there and it gives the beer a wee bit of sweetness you could maybe argue that this one even has a little bit of that kind of Werther's original sort of um, you know butterscotchy butter candy type thing to it as well definitely getting a little bit of that in the malt base here but you can really smell the oats coming out of this one and it has that stereotypical kind of hellish lager it's almost a little bit creamy like Pilsner Rurkel can be if you get it fresh on tap so that's a really interesting point to make about this beer the malt base in this one is absolutely lovely I'd love to see these oat lagers catch on a little bit more and see more and more breweries having a go at these actually that would be really fun um, but yeah 
yeah, yeah, I'm doing uh, on the hoppy side of things, it's kind of what you ex you would expect. I suspect that this beer is, you know, like Hather Tower Tetanang, maybe, um, you know, the smoothness of it might mean that it's one of the Slovenian hops, actually. But you certainly get a little touch of earthiness on the hoppy side of things, lovely kind of bright floral aromaticity to it, and there's a nice kind of bright grassy uh, character to this one, which I... Uh, which I really like as well. So the green component gives you everything you'd expect of uh, of a lager beer. But on the fruity side of things, again, it's what you'd expect. There's a lovely little bit of a kind of uh, pear-y character to this one. You certainly get a wee bit of pear, a little bit of apricot, and they're very, very soft, actually. You could maybe say there's a wee bit of a kind of sultana-like quality in there as well. And then there's also some kind of lemon uh, there is a wee bit of a kind of lemon limey sort of lemon grassy kind of thing to this beer but I mean overall uh, uh, the aroma of this one is very very nice actually so yeah this is definitely worth uh, having a look at I think so let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on I'm really curious about this so yeah the Market Hellas an oat lager from uh, Mikula's Brew Pub in London let's have a look at this Slange that's really nice actually um, again with the oat lagers it's the smoothness I mean these are it's still quite a new style and it's still quite exciting to try these I have to say so yeah but I'm, I'm going to say this one is quite nice not quite as smooth and sweet as I remember the new Barnes one from Edinburgh being but still pretty solid so let's um Break down the flavour for you. So, middle of your palate in this one then. Um, I would say middle of your palate is really smooth in this. You can feel the backbone of this beer is that lovely kind of crisp lager malt in there. I do suspect there's a bit of Pilsner malt in this one. It has, it has the dryness and crispness you'd expect of Pilsner malt. But on top of that, you can feel a sort of soft, white, bready character in there. And like I say, in the middle third of your palate, you do get that kind of creaminess that you expect of a... Of, um, you know, of a kind of hellish. You can sometimes get some of these really nice, kind of creamy, soft white bready notes out of it. But certainly, as you move out towards the the extremities of that middle third of your palate, you certainly get some more kind of um, of that crisp Pilsner malty vibe. You get certainly get a wee bit of biscuit, a sort of McVitie's digestive biscuit sweetness in this one, which I really like. Um, but you've all you've got some really really nice flavour to this one. As I say, the thing that comes out, the oats really come out in the aftertaste and give you the smoothness, and I really like that about this beer absolutely so the malty side of things gets a big thumbs up for me the further you go into the aftertaste you might also get a little bit of that kind of butter candy Warder's original sort of thing that I was talking about but on the back of the palate you certainly get a bit more kind of crispness and a slight graininess out of this one a wee bit of a bread crust but um, yeah malty side of things in this one is really nice on the hoppy side of things then uh, back corners of the palate there is a wee bit of earthiness there but as soon as you move forward you get a lovely big kind of floral character out of the beer um, it's, I'd say that it's got a good little bit of bitterness to it as well but um, yeah the kind of floral character that comes out of this one is quite um, I'd say that it's quite you know it's not overly bitter but it's quite bright I would say as well but around the front curve of the palate it's a little bit lighter and, um, and grassy for sure and the grassiness has a wee bit of a zesty character to it as well so again I find that uh, really quite nice it's quite bright actually but it does give you a little bit of a wetter leafy quality later on into the um, into the aftertaste so yeah fruity side of things is kind of as you pick up in the aroma a little bit of a soft apricot as well a wee bit of a kind of brighter lemon grassy sort of thing so um yeah the way this goes together is very nice actually um you know yeah bit of a bit of soft apricot a little bit of a kind of um, you do get a wee bit of an apple-y kind of pear-y quality on the front part of the, the palate with this beer as well. So yeah, nice oily fruity characters. In terms of mouthfeel, very smooth, kind of top end and mid-bodied for me. IBUs are 20 if you're lucky I would say. Um, but yeah, smooth malt base. Nice little bit of oily, fruity character. Very nice beer, this one. So, yeah, first one here then at Mikular and Friends in, on Stefan's Garden in Copenhagen. So, yeah, Market Hellas, 5.2% ABV, brewed by Mikular uh, London Brew Pub. Let's leave it at that for the first one. Let's see what else we can get. All right, guys, so as I showed you on the wee walk around video, there's 40 
different beers here, which uh, is pretty extensive. So as you can see on the left, just over here, they do them by colour. So you've got uh, hoppy beers and green, light beers and white, dark beers and red, sour beers and blue, and then just random stuff in yellow. So yeah, if we just go through the list, you can see different me killer things, the Meisel's original vice, Abletoft in there, some Toul stuff as well. Um, yeah, lots of different things. There's a Warpigs beer up there as well. Um, we have some Jester King. I think they're Texas, if I remember rightly, in the States. Some Oban as well. Not reviewed anything from those guys in a while. Polly's from Wales. A little bit of Amarbrucus. Um, Stigberg is from Sweden. Bad Seed as well, who are from near um, or uh, Alborg uh, over on Uland. And uh, yeah, a little bit of Wyla as well. So a really good selection of stuff actually. So this is very, very cool. Very good tap selection, I have to say. All right guys, so managed to change positions. So the camera zooming might be a little bit more stable this time. Basically just moved kind of around the corner from where I was before. But um, yeah, beer tasting number two then. This is the Space Race uh, gluten-free IPA, 6.7% ABV. I asked the girl at the bar what what her favourite IPA was because I couldn't decide and she said Space Race, so here we go. Um, I don't think I've had this one before. I recognise the name, but I'm pretty sure I haven't tried this one. I could be telling you lies, so if I am, I do apologise. But I think after 3,000 odd beers, you can maybe forgive me for that one. But um, yeah, as you can see and as you'd expect from a kind of modern IPA, lovely kind of bright yellow colour. Um, nice level of haze to it as well. For a 6.7 percenter, I would actually say this one is not the haziest of beers you're going to come across. Had a little bit of a kind of foamy white head on it when it came out. I would have said it was in a perfect white head, sort of creamy. But um, yeah, looks very nice, kind of as you'd expect from a kind of modern New England IPA. But yeah, let's take a look at the aroma and see how we go. That's really nice. Very light tropical fruits. Um, it's all rounder, it's a very smooth, very light, almost paleo like uh, new sort of idea. This one, I guess you could say. So, backbone of this one, lovely soft white bread. You can certainly smell a wee bit of bread crust in there, but I'd say this one leans towards the soft white bread, kind of oaty and creamy end of the New England IPA spectrum. Um, I don't think there's too much more to say about it. It doesn't really have any biscuity sweetness or any sort of Werther's Original butter candy type thing. Very much a straight up smooth, kind of creamy uh, sort of New England IPA, this one. So, fits the bill, I would say. Uh, lovely stuff. So yeah, hoppy side of things then. Green component to the beer, definitely a wee tiny tiny touch of earthiness there, but that takes a back seat to everything else. Bright floral aromaticity to it, a lovely lighter kind of bright grassy component. Uh, I would say overall, the green component really leans towards the, the grassy side of things. It's got quite a wet, leafy sort of grassy character to it, in my opinion. So yeah, aroma-wise, this one I think is uh, is really really nice. Um, on the fruity side of things, soft mango, apricot, absolutely, maybe I'd maybe even go as far as saying a little bit of papaya on this one, so I do wonder if this could be citra, uh, you know, I think it's probably citra and maybe a little bit of something like Idaho 7 or um, Brain's Not Working, Idaho 7 or uh, El Dorado. That's it. I think it's something like this. Maybe Victoria's Secret would be another option. It's got these very soft, tropical fruit notes to it. Um, it doesn't really smell orangey or anything like that. Yeah, I would stick with mango, papaya, apricot, these kind of very, very soft, tropical fruit notes. And it's maybe got a little bit of a kind of lemony, limey zest to it, which makes me think there's a bit of citra in there as well. But overall, a lovely, soft, smooth smell in New England IPA. But yeah, let's get stuck into this one then. So this is the Space Race, 6.7% um, New England gluten-free IPA, I guess we could say. Spilling a wee bit of it here because I'm clumsy. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, let's go. That's pretty solid actually. I did have a gluten-free IPA from somebody 
quite recently, and I think I think it might have been one of the English breweries, and I forget which one. Um, but it came through System Bolaga a few months back, and it was actually it was really nice. I honest, I wish I could remember which brewery it was right now. But this is really solid. It doesn't taste that much different from uh, a kind of regular IPA, if you like. I would say that if anything, it's just a bit lighter body and a bit kind of crisper. So for a six point seven percent, it maybe doesn't quite have the body you get from a normal. IPA, but it certainly, you know, it doesn't come across as being too different. It comes across as being a bit bitey and a bit more sort of wheaty and zippy, if that makes sense. So let's look at this then. Yeah, the malt base in this one, white bread across the middle and back third of your palate, wee bit of bread crust in there. You can feel a bit, you can feel um, the oats kind of smoothing this one out. As I say, I don't think it's going to have wheat in it, obviously, because wheat has gluten, and that that means you don't have the, uh, the kind of, that means you're, you, you, it's not going to be a gluten-free IPA. That's my brain fart there mentioning wheat earlier. But, um, yeah, it certainly has almost the same kind of bitey sort of thing that you're going to get from some of the session IPAs um, and some of the more wheaty leaning New England IPAs. So this is really interesting in that regard. Um, you do get a wee bit of sweetness in the malt base and I think it's the oats that give you that and it does almost have a wee bit of that Werther's Original sort of thing. Um, a wee bit of that comes out into the aftertaste and that's that varies a little bit from the aroma. But on the uh, hoppy side of things, there's a little touch of earthiness to this one in the, uh, the back corners of the palate there. As you move further forward it's a little bit more floral. It's not really that bitter, this one. It's actually quite a low IBU beer, but around the front curve of the palate, it's lighter and grassy, absolutely, but quite smooth in that sense. As I say, around the front curve of the palate, um, it's a wee bit wet and leafy as well, and the fruity side of things is actually quite similar to what you pick up from the aroma. So yeah, teeny bit of a stronger passion fruit, which makes sense if it's citra and Idaho 7, and Eldorado is going to give you that as well. But as you move further forward, softer mango, wee bits of apricot and papaya if you like, but I'd say it's more of a kind of pungent passion fruit and a bit of an oily mango that comes out of this one. And as you move into the front part of that, as you move into the front half of that, um, half that front half of your tongue, you get a wee bit of a citrusy, zesty sort of thing. And again, that makes me suspect citra because citra gives you these sort of lemon limey notes. So you definitely get a wee bit of a lemon limey note just behind the front tip of your tongue in this one. Um, but in terms of the mouthfeel, like I said, this one's a bit lighter body than you get for a normal six. 0.7% non gluten free New England IPA for me, but still very smooth, a little bit zippy and bitey in a sense. But I think that suits it, um, and it doesn't very differ too much from those wheaty leaning IPAs. It's quite similar to those in terms of the vibe that you get from it. IBUs, I think, is a sort of it's 25 or 30, fairly standard in my opinion. Then lovely kind of soft fruity characters, but maybe a wee touch oily, I would say. But yeah, Space Race, 6.7% gluten free IPA. It's pretty nice. So yeah, good recommendation from the girl at the bar. Let's go on to the next one. Cheers to now. Alright guys, well something a little bit random, if you come past the uh, the bathrooms, you actually end up in the Cool Ship Bar. Now the bar isn't operating today, but you know, it's kind of just acting as a little bit of a bottle shop. But yeah, if you look at the fridges and stuff over here, you can see they've got some Decam in there, some Mikula Bauhaun, some of the Spontan things from Mikula as well, a few old beer cells, um, Trappist Achel, Orval, uh, Heuse uh, Girardin. I'm not sure if they are from the French speaking region or the Dutch speaking region, Wallonie or Flanders, I don't know, so I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly. But yeah, Heuse Boon, uh, Krieg Boon, a few other different things in there. There's Hansen's Artisanal, Tilkin, De Fontaine, Cantillon. Um, yeah, some awesome stuff here. And then over here, it seems to be lots of different. Uh, things from all over the place. So yeah, there you've got a few of the more unusual nuclear things. But um, yeah, a lot of these I have never seen before. I genuinely didn't realize that um, the Cool Ship Bar was right next to Mikula and Friends. I honestly had no idea, but it is just an absolutely tiny, tiny little place. But look at this, some Rodenbach things in here that I've never seen. 
That's Creek Derankia, Crooked Stave as well from the States. Um, I think that's the brewery over there. Some Cascade brewing stuff. They are, you know, these Pacific Northwest sours are sour as hell, basically. But um, yeah, if we just turn around. This is a really tiny little place, actually, but there's another room through here. But like I say, um, they're not really using this at the moment. I think, I don't know if that's just due to COVID or what, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And there you can see on the door, yeah, just cool ship. So this was a pretty cool find, actually. Didn't expect this. So guys, just to let you see the outside of the Cool Ship Bar, there is Mikeler and Friends, and there is Cool Ship. And again, one of these little basement things that you get here in Copenhagen. All right guys, so tasting number three then here at Mikeler and Friends and Stefan Skarret in Copenhagen. So the one that we have now is my first of the Hello Ich Bin series, which is Mikeler's series of Berliner Weisses. So this one comes in at 3.7% ABV and it is with raspberries. So yeah, I've never tried one of these series um, and I don't know why, I think I just never got round to it because Mikeler do so many different beers. But I kind of saw it on the bar in here and I thought, well, you're in Copenhagen, you've not had a sour beer in this video, why not? So um, yeah, as you can see and as you expect from a raspberry balloon of ice it's poured a lovely I would say kind of you know sort of candy red sort of cherry red I guess we could say kind of like that reminds me of the Gibson SG guitar you know that heritage cherry, cherry color that you get from Gibson when it poured it had a kind of soft creamy colored head obviously a little bit of a kind of pink tinge to it which is what you'd expect from uh, a raspberry balloon of ice and um, yeah it absolutely looks the part one or two big bubbles stick into the side of the glass a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head but appearance wise nothing that you wouldn't expect of a balloon of ice uh, from this beer so let's look at the aroma and see how we go with this one oh, i keep knocking these little glasses it's the thing in the bottom here but yeah um straight away with this one it's kind of what you'd expect i've always found that mikel or sour beers have this really kind of sharp edge to them the sour stuff that they do is really good incidentally the spontan series is beautiful so try those if you get the chance um but this one really is lovely and tart actually but the tart the tartness that you get out of these Mikula sour beers is always very rounded and just you know spot on um, but yeah backbone of this beer is lovely and smooth white bready character in there you can smell that big smooth thick wheaty character out of this one it has a little bit of the kind of yogurty sort of thing that you would expect as well um, I always find that these Berliner Weisses and Goshers and things tend to be a little bit yogurty but yeah the, the wheatiness in this one white bread smooth bread crust thick wheaty character really like how this uh, really 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 like how this goes together so um, yeah in terms of uh, multi backbone this one is pretty much what you'd expect now I'm, a bit con I'm not 100% sure whether this one is going to have hops in it because remember some breweries like to say yes to uh, put in hops in these in these beers some of them just like to say no um, yeah this one I'm not 100% sure about um, you can smell a little bit of floral character at this one and certainly a little bit of grassiness and zestiness and there's a wee bit of earthiness in there as well but the thing is sometimes when you add these these kind of berry fruits into the beer you can get a little bit of that from the berry itself so I'm not 100% sure about this one I'm leaning towards saying no because I know that raspberries can be particularly guilty for giving you these um, kind of earthy grassy zesty kind of notes so I'm tempted to say no with this one um, but I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't at the same time I wouldn't be surprised if there was a little bit of hop in this so kind of undecided to be honest with you because often these sour beers can give you that little green hoppy placebo but whatever it is it smells nice but the raspberries are really sharp and tart in this one but like I said with these Mikeler beers the tart 
this tends to be very rounded, um, big and juicy, just really nicely rounded this one, juiciness from the raspberries, tartness in there as well, as I say you get a wee bit of that sort of bramble woody sort of thing as well, don't know how good a term bramble is to use in these videos but that's a, you know, a Scottish term, we call these things brambles, but um, yeah, this should be quite nice, so yeah this is one of the Hello Ich Bin Billion of Isaac series, it just yeah, it just says on the tap list, Hello Ich Bin, so I'm not sure of the exact name of this one, but it's a raspberry version, so let's have a taste of this. 3.7% Bellina Vasa from Mikeler. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Ooh. That's actually very nice. Lovely, <coughs> pardon me, kind of summery beer. Took a little bit of that down the wrong way. Not a bad beer, of course. Um, I'd say the impact on this one is pretty sharp and tart. And this is something that we've had from Mikeler before. So as I always say with sour beers, you need to have a few sips of these to really let your mouth adjust. But this one is pretty damn tart, actually. But I will say that it delivers what you expect of a Mikeler Bellina Weisse. So, middle of your palate, lovely smooth, kind of thick white bready character in this one. The wheat's in there as well. You do get a wee touch of bitiness from the wheat at the back of the palate. And this beer doesn't really have any kind of brown sugary sweetness to it or anything. The malt base is pretty much straight up wheat, thick white bread. It has everything that you'd, you'd want from the style, actually. These Berliner Weisses are often very, very straightforward in their mouth feel. So, yeah, I don't think there's too much more to say about the, um, the malty side of things in this. From the flavour, I think there's not hops in this because you can feel that it's very, very smooth there. You just get a little bit of this kind of placebo out of the beer. So for me, there's certainly a wee bit of air in the back corners of the palate but you can feel the sides of your palate are very smooth there's a little floral placebo and a bit of a kind of zesty grassy placebo around the kind of front third of your palate but I think it's the smoothness on the side of the palate that tells you there's not hops in this one so I think there's not hops in this beer um, but yeah the fruity side of the beer is pretty interesting so as I said this one comes in really sharp and tart big big raspberry character to this one it's a raspberry balloon of ice set stating the obvious here Duh, that's what you'd expect it juices up really quite nicely but I'd say the tartness in this one really remains I've had a good few sips of this beer now and the tart impact you get out of this one really remains there and of course you get a nice undertone of a few other things there's a wee bit of a a more candied raspberry in there, a bit of a candied strawberry, some lighter figgy notes there on that front third of your palate. But yeah, you can feel the juicy fruitiness kind of going around the edge of your palate too. And as I always say, when you add fruit as an adjunct into a beer, as you do in these Berliner Weisses and Roses, you can get some of that around the edge of the palate rather than the green character. But yeah, it's a very straight shooting beer this actually, but certainly very, very tart. And um, the tartness is quite reminiscent of the spontan beers that I've had from Mikula before. So this is pretty damn solid actually. I'm a bit disappointed in myself that I haven't tried some something from this Spontan series before, but um, I like this one, but at the same time I do find this beer's got quite a big earthy and slightly grainy character into the aftertaste, but yeah, mouthfeel wise, kind of top end, top end of the spectrum I would say for uh, Bloody Device, I find this one quite thick, um, the malt base is very thick in this one for me. Quite old school, like I say, though. In terms of IBUs, I think technically speaking, this is a zero IBU beer, but there will be a few things going on in there. But certainly a very sharp and tart thing on the end of the spectrum when I compare it to the other Nordic IP, uh, Berliner Weisses, sorry, that I've had. So this is an interesting one. The Hello, Ich bin ein Berliner Raspberry Edition from Mikula. This was an interesting find. This, and I'm glad I finally got around to reviewing one of these. We're going to do one more tasting, and then we're going to round off this video. So see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, so fourth and final tasting then here at Mikler and Friends on Stefan Skada in Copenhagen. So for our last beer, we're going for something dark. That's always the way you should round off, in my opinion. So this one is the Mikler Beergeek Brunch 
um, flat white Kieni. So it comes in at 7.5% ABV. We know the Beer Geek Brunch beer. It's one of the Mikeller classics, the oatmeal coffee stout, but they do lots of different variants of this thing. Different coffee beans, different barrel agings, all of this idea. Although, as I say, this one is 7.5% ABV, and I remember these beers being a lot heavier than this before, so this one seems as if it's maybe been kind of toned down a little bit almost. So, um, yeah, I'm curious to see what this has in store for us. But having looked it up, the Kieni beans are a specific type of coffee bean from Kenya and Africa. The Kieni, uh, Kieni seems to be a sort of region, a town in Kenya, to the south of Mount Kenya itself. And it's a collective of about a thousand different coffee bean farmers, which is pretty cool. The bean itself is supposed to give you um, some quite acidic notes, um, but a lot of black currant a blackberry notes, and gooseberry. So yeah, I'm curious to see how it turns out. As I've done and said in a lot of my kind of sit down reviews, I love coffee beans as an adjunct in craft beer, one of my favourite things. So when it comes to coffee beans, the big factor with these is the mazzle, the metres above sea level. So the higher the altitude at which you grow the coffee bean, the more likely you are to get aromaticity, floral notes, um, you know, fruitiness and so on. Um, coffee beans, one of the most diverse adjuncts that you can put in beer. But um, yeah. It's taken a little, it took me a little while to get into coffee stouts, but the Mikeller, um Beer Geek Brunch series, I love these. And this is just one that I hadn't had before, so let's look at this. So as you can see, lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. This one, when the beer poured, it had about a half finger of a frothy, I would say kind of medium tan head. Faded away to be a very thin layer now. But um, yeah, as you'd expect from a, a stout, it's, it's it, the appearance isn't a surprise. So in terms of the aroma then, let's look at that. Um, yeah, you get the coffee bean straight out uh, straight out of this one straight away, but you can smell that lovely kind of brown bready backbone to this one, some toasty bread crust, big sort of brown rye bready kind of elements to it. And there's certainly a little bit of a kind of smooth sort of cocoa chocolatey kind of thing to this one. I would say about I would say about kind of fifty percent cocoa. So um, yeah, lovely. I'd say you know about maybe fifty percent cocoa. So there's a bit of milky chocolate in there, but also a little bit of darker chocolate as well. A wee bit of brown sugar, but you certainly get that lovely kind of smooth, fibrousy sort of thing from the coffee beans. And the coffee bean itself, I do get the red fruity notes and. I I can smell the gooseberry, certainly. You might say it's the power of suggestion, having looked up what this coffee bean actually is. But I can see what they mean with the gooseberry notes. At the same time though, I don't find it overly acidic. I find it quite aromatic. You know, there's quite a bit of floral character from this bean for me. So I like how, um, how it goes together in that sense. Um, so yeah, big kind of floral characters in there. Um, yeah, big floral characters out of the coffee bean here. It's got some grassiness as well, as I say. There's a wee touch of earthiness to it, and I find it overall to be really quite smooth, actually. So the, um, the, the, the notes out of the coffee bean and the aroma here are absolutely lovely. On the hoppy side of things, lovely smooth earthiness, nice little touch of floral character there, but quite a smooth grassiness overall. And on the fruity side of the, the hops, I'd say it's quite, you know, light and figgy, I mean, you know. Yeah, I'd say quite light and figgy more than anything else but um, yeah light and figgy overall um, but you do get a wee tiny bit of a sharper raisin and plummy kind of note to it as well let's say that but aroma of this beer is absolutely lovely and this is what we've become accustomed to with this beer geek brunch series but let's look at this one then so yeah this one is the Mikeller uh, beer geek brunch flat white kieni 7.5% ABV let's get stuck in slanger skull cheers <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. When you take the beer in, a little bit of dryness for sure. You expect this from a coffee stout, a little bit of a dry bitter sort of thing, but a very smooth beer. 7.5% as well. You can feel the sort of lightness of the stout in a sense when we're used to these big imperial stouts. You, can, you, you just feel the difference in the body, but it's certainly not lacking in flavour. So thumbs up to Mikula for that. But yeah, this is very, very nice. 
So yeah, let's break the flavour of this one down then. Across the middle of your palate, you can feel that roasty, toasty, bread crusty sort of thing. On top of that, you get a lovely smooth brown bready character. You can feel the sort of fibrous thing from the, the coffee bean as well, going right across the middle of your palate. Towards the back of your palate, you feel the more earthy characters of the coffee bean. As you come further forward, you get the lovely sort of aromatic -y notes. But there's also that um, you do get that red fruity note out of it. It's quite interesting to get fruity notes in the very middle of your palate with the beer because normally, of course, you associate those with the hoppy side of the beer. But yeah, definitely, I see what they're saying with black currant and blackberry in this one. The black currant, of course, is a little bit sharper and juicier, whereas the black currant is um, more soft, if that makes sense. And you get a, you do get a wee bit of that gooseberry kind of thing the further into the aftertaste you go. So I see what they're saying with all of these fruity notes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I I wouldn't I don't really agree with the acidic side of it to be honest. But I think I, I see it more as quite a floral and aromatic coffee with a bit of earthiness behind it rather than anything else. So the coffee bean thing that you get out of this one is really nice. But underneath the coffee bean, I want to say there is a bit of chocolate in there. I sort of. It's quite a dry, powdery chocolate at that, and I would say about 60% cocoa, definitely. A bit milky, but at the same time, quite a bit of dark chocolate character. So the malty, adjuncty side of this beer is absolutely lovely. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things, this beer is, as you'd expect, back corners of the palate really nice and, nice and earthy. As you come further forward, a wee bit herbal. Front corners of your palate, it's got a little bit of floral character to it, but quite a smooth floral note around the front curve of the tongue. A bit brighter and grassy, very slightly zesty, but at the same time a wee bit wet and leafy. So green component is kind of what you'd expect, but front third of your palate with the fruity side of things, it's a wee bit more oily. Definitely a little bit of a raisiny sharpness in there for me, a wee bit of plum underneath but then an oily, sort of juicy, figgy character otherwise. But I think the sharper, raisiny notes uh, linger with this one the further you go into the aftertaste. But yeah, pretty solid. Stout this one. For 7.5%, the flavour in this one is absolutely packed. Um, but it just feels a bit lighter because it's seven and a half percent. I do remember. I can't remember what percentage these used to be, but I'm sure these beers were heavier than they are now. But yeah, let's round off this final taste and then with a the mouthfeel. So yeah, I would say. Top end, the mid-body for me, smooth carbonation. I'd describe this one as actually being quite slick, but quite dry at the same time. In terms of bitterness, this beer is pretty bitter. I think this is going to be, you know, 80, 90 IBUs. It's up that end of the scale. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the full 100, because you've got some bitterness from the coffee, but also from the hoppy side of the beer. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the full 100 IBUs. But the coffee, but the coffee side of the, the coffee side of the beer is um, it's really smooth as well. It's a little bit fruity and aromatic, like we say. And you've also got some nice, um, as I say, oily, fruity character to this beer too. So it looks really, really nice, or it tastes really nice, I should say. Brain's not working. The guy came to take away the glasses that are popping up, that are popping up the camera, by the way. And that's why I was like. What's going on here? I shit myself. I have to say. But yeah, <laughs> I think that's the way to say it. I was like, oh no, video's going to be ruined. But yeah, that rounds off our um, that rounds off our our final tasting then. So yeah, like I say, this one was the Mikular um, Beer Geek um, Flat White Kieni. One of the beer series, 7.5%, as I say, a little bit lighter than we've had before, but this is a really nice way to round, round off our time here at Mikula and Friends on Stefan Skara. Hope you've enjoyed the four tastings that we've done. I'll give you my final thoughts when we get outside. Slange just now. Yeah. Alright guys, so my final thoughts then on Mikula and Friends here in Copenhagen. So I had a really nice evening, I got to do four different beer tastings, have a look around the bar and things like that, and it was really good. We got a lager, uh, an IPA, a Berliner Weisse and a Stout. So a good, well-rounded experience in that sense. In the beginning, the service was a bit slow. I don't know if when I came in they were changing kegs or whatever, but it did take a little bit of time to get my first beer served to me, which was a, a bit annoying. But, um, you know, that happens sometimes. You just have to kind of go with that. But after that, the service was good, and the girl behind the counter was really, really helpful. So I was quite happy with it. 
Um, later on, as you saw in the fourth tasting, there was a guy came in and he tried to take away the, the, the glasses I was using to prop up the camera. So my constipated face in the last tasting was because I was like, no, 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 don't take this away, right in the middle of the review. But um, yeah, all four of the beers that we had were really nice and fresh enough and things like that. There was no problem there. Now, one sort of minor complaint I would have about this is that this is supposed to be a Mikeler Total collaboration. So yeah, there was lots of different Mikeler stuff on tap, but only one Total, and that was the 45 days Vienna Lager. And I didn't notice that until the end, actually. I didn't notice that there was any Total stuff on tap. So that's the one thing I would say is that they need to make sure there's more Total uh, on tap at any one time. But we're not too far away from Bruce, so I don't know if that's the reason why there's not so much to roll on tap here. But regardless, I had a really nice time here. I think for the beers that I had, I paid 160 Danish kroner, which is maybe about 18, 20 euros, something like this. So not bad when you consider Danish prices and the earning levels and stuff here. But uh, yeah, it was really nice to finally come here. I had a nice time doing some stouts with Alan. So yeah. It was good, it was good. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Definitely cool to add this one to the out and about playlist. So uh, yeah, we'll see about filming another one or two of these over the next couple of days. Slange it, skull, cheers. Make sure you check out Mikeler and Friends on Stefan Skada here in Copenhagen. Catch you guys on the next one.